Hi welcome back, in continuation of our last video, can you explain red slash right capacity units in DynamoDB? Hi, good morning. Thank you for making the discussion interesting. The question you asked is very good for understanding the throughput which is missing with many good engineers. It is also interesting because many times it is the one point that will change your uh, approach to the latency issue in a real world. Now coming back to your problem, read capacity RCU, read capacity units and write capacity unit WCU are the measurement of throughput in Dynamo DB. One RCU represent one strongly consistent read per second or uh, two eventually consistent read per second for an item up to four kilobyte in size. One WCU write capacity unit represent one write per second for an item up to one KB in size. Provisioned throughput capacity must be allocated ahead of time, while on demand capacity scales automatically. So I hope it is clear, right? That uh, pro in case of provisioned, you have to do configuration beforehand, and in case of on demand, uh, it will automatically scale for you but definitely it has incurred cost also for your system. So uh, here your uh, like um, experience versus cost, what kind of uh, features you want in your system. So it is your decision to decide what kind of experience you want in your service, okay? Now let's go back again and start explaining you in little more de de detail because RCU and WCU is the two factor which is, which is very, very important in uh, DynamoDB at least for understanding the throughput requirement, understanding the performance of your system, understanding the how much latency is wearable within your service, right? So you should be clear with this and then based on your understanding, you are going to design a best service for your customer, for your end customer who are you going to use your service. Hope I hope that I'm clear until now. Let's move to the RCU and WCU in little much little more detail one by one, okay? Let's define read capacity units in little more detail. So read one read capacity unit, RCU, represents one strongly consistent read per second or two eventual consist, eventually consistent read per second for an item up to 4 KB in size. The size is measured by the item footprint, not by the amount of data that is read it here. Okay. Now strongly versus eventual consistent reads I can, I, I have to define it like uh, strongly consistent reads. They reflect all writes that receives a successful response before the read. So whatever the all write happens successfully, your system is up to that point able to read just after the write, successfully write finished. So uh, for each strongly consistent read request, one RCU is consumed. I have already shared you information before, right? So for every 4KB, they have to go for one strongly consistent read or equivalent eventual two eventual consistent read, okay? Now, now little bit more about the eventual consistent read. What is the meaning of it? The, they might not reflect the result of a recently completed write. However, they provide a throughput benefit since one RCU can perform two eventually consistent reads of 4KB per second, okay? I hope uh, RCU and WCU is clear by now, okay? So another thing is, um, Another uh, segment where I can discuss partial RCU. If you perform a read operation of an item smaller than smaller than 4 KB in size, okay? In that case, DynamoDB rounds the item size up to nearest 4 KB. For example, reading a 3.5 KB item will consume one RCU, a strongly consistent read unit, or half of an half an RCU eventually consistent read unit. What does it mean here that like if even though your uh, read data is lesser, like lesser than 4 KB, it does not mean that uh, you will uh, finish in uh, like 0 0.75 RCU or uh, uh, write consist, I mean read consistency unit, okay? In that, I mean, in that case also, you have to expand one strongly consistent read unit. And, and the other side, like uh, eventual consistent, instead of two for 4KB, now you only require one uh, eventual read consistent unit to, to, to read 3.5KB. So in a net effect, 
uh, you can argue but uh, this seems to be a uh, eventual consistent reading is more powerful or more beneficial not a powerful more beneficial as per the cost uh, what it, i mean as per the designed dynamo db uh, for you so that's why these are the things also nitty and gritty which is uh, very much required for an architect to understand it another important thing here is burst capacity dynamo db employs burst capacity for rcus allowing short spikes in read activity without throttling provided the average read rate remains within the provision read throughput calculating rcus for an architect calculating the required rcu for a workload is a key task now determine the average item size decide on the read consistency model strongly consistent or eventually consistent right so estimate the read request rate per second adjust the calculations based on the average item size and the request rate considering burst capacity so all right let's let's little bit more discuss about the architectural consideration as a best practices let's discuss the provisional throughput mode this mode requires precise capacity planning architects need to provision sufficient rcu and wcu to meet the application demand they must also account for auto scaling policies that automatically adjust the throughput to meet workload demands another segment is on demand capacity mode for unpredictable workloads this mode allows the table to automatically scale to support the workload it eliminates the need for capacity planning but it's generally more expensive than provisional throughput another segment we have to understand is global secondary index each gsi requires its own rcu and wcu for reading and writing data so when using gsi you will need additional capacity you need to be careful another segment which we have to be attentive is cost optimization monitoring uses pattern and adjusting provisional rcu and wc can lead to significant cost saving especially for large scale application another key segment which i am going to follow in next segment is performance consideration so continue to the next segment now i told you in the last segment that we have to consider now the performance consideration an understanding of the partition mechanism is important because it impacts the utilization of provisioned rcu and wcu inefficient key design can lead to unbalanced data distribution and hot partition which can cause throttling in your service so be careful and be mindful of this in conclusion an architect decision read write capacity units in dynamo db must consider these units not just in isolation but as a part of the overall system data access patterns cost implications and performance requirement capacity planning becomes a crucial exercise that aligns with the application's architecture and scales in response to the operational metrics observed from the actual uses of the database please note it let me repeat again uh, in conclusion as a conclusion we can always consider like an architect always have to discuss read write capacity unit then they have also consider what kind of capacity planning he has to do what kind of performance requirement he has what kind of um, global gsi is going to impact the rcu wc requirement what kind of cost optimization you are looking for your service all these things you need to uh, club together sit on one place consider all these facts and then take your appropriate decision as an architect what you have decided not there only just after decision also let's observe the few key metrics data in your service so that you are able to justify your decision if anything makes no sense for you after seeing the key metrics you can uh, modify it accordingly to to justify your decisions so that whatever the decision you have taken uh, that should be certified by your key metrics that is what you should always always think i hope now at least wcu and rcu and uh, different kind of um, consideration as an architect uh, whatever i have suggested or whatever i have uh, just now explained you makes sense to you right uh, let me know if you have any further question on this thank you thank you for completing this video and i hope that you definitely have learned something which will help you in your system design interview hope to see you in next video with new concept and skills needed for the system design interview by then keep learning keep improving and keep sharing your knowledge